Hello, hello, this is Milana Lyshinsky and I am live. If you if you're watching this as a replay, uh, you might want to maybe forward this video just a little bit, maybe a minute or so, because I am waiting for everybody to say hello to me. And we're going to get into the goodies in about a minute and a half or so. And while I'm waiting for people to show up and to start uh, watching this Facebook live training, I am going to share this in my group so that uh, you guys can see that I'm going to actually pin it to the top so it's going to be easy to find. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to share it in Simplicity Circle group. Bum, 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 bum. It's kind of funny. It's kind of like asking me to wait. Share. There we go. Someday I'm going to get an assistant to do that. Uh, but right now, I think um, I'm good with that. And if you are watching this and you want to say hello, and let me know that you're here with me to learn how to grow your business and the 20 strategies that I'm going to share with you. Um, please say hello. And uh, I'll give you a shout out. So let me see. We're almost, I should say, the top of the hour, but it's really like 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. So we're going to get started really soon. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to pin the live um, training to the top. Hello, hello. If you're here, give me a heart. Give me thumbs up. Uh, let me know you're watching. Um, all right. I think I'm all set. The video is now broadcasting inside the Simplicity Circle group. And I see people are starting to watch. So hello, everybody. If you are watching, what I would love to know from you. Hi, Nancy. Hello. It's good to see you. It's always great to have your support. You will actually love this training. Nancy Marmalejo is a very good friend of mine. And when I first left my business last year, um, she and I had a really good chat. And uh, our ideas really collided in a good way. We're like, she's already been exploring some things that I've just started now to explore. So that, that was really interesting. Um, hi, Pam. You can see her fine. She's warbally, but could be on my end. Um, I'm thinking that when you say she, you mean you, mean you Milana. <laughs> but I'm here live. Um, so if you're having any difficulties watching this, could be the connection. I see myself fine through the Be Live um, TV, which is what I'm using. And the coolest thing that people uh, love when I show is when I do this. So I can do this. If you are posting a comment, I can actually show it to everybody just like this, right in front of myself. And... Um, People always ask me, how do you do that? What's the magic tool? And it's BeLive.TV. That's the company that I'm using to broadcast this. And it goes right into Facebook, which is really, really cool. I love that part. So we have quite a few people watching. I know we're going to have more people joining. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let me put this training into perspective for you. <laughs> I think... I wanted to do this class because it's designed to get you to think about where growth comes from. What should you be focusing on? What growth path should you get on? And so I'm hoping to inspire you to think, to evaluate, to do some self-exploration as you're listening to these 26 strategies. I'm sure there are more, by the way, but these are the ones that I have personally experienced over the last 17 years in my business. For those of you who don't know a little bit of my story, I will tell you that last August, exactly a year ago, like a year and a week ago, I signed an agreement, a buyout agreement, and I um, sold my half of the company to my business partner last year, and I walked away. And it happened right as we were making over a million dollars. Yay, Pam. Pam says that I am loud and clear. That's awesome. Thank you so much for letting me know. Uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome. And yeah, Nancy says, I can't believe it's already been a year. I know it, it seems like it's just happened recently, um, but it's good. Um, I find that when life 
goes a little slower, that means that I'm enjoying it a little bit. I get a chance to enjoy it a little more. I, I can see how if it goes too slow, then maybe it's not going too well because you want something to end. But um, um, yeah, so I really want to inspire you to think today. Now, someone asked me, 26 strategies? Really? What happened to simplicity? So let me put this mini training in perspective for you. Different growth strategies will be great for you at different stages of growth. I actually had a conversation with my one of my best friends a few days ago, and she and as I was saying all these strategies, she kept shaking her head, and I'm like, what are you doing? You don't agree with these strategies? You don't like any of them? What's happening? And she said, no, Milana, growth happens. Growth comes from systems. And I questioned myself for a moment, like, yeah, systems are important. And actually, one of the strategies I'll be talking about will have the idea of systems. But the reason that she was saying that is because she was working uh, with somebody who was already at the level where systems were timely. After the message has already been clarified, after the niche has already been defined, after the product and program has already been created, now let's systematize it. So growth happens through systems in her mind. Uh, but depending on where you are right now, you will resonate with, you know, five or less or fewer of these strategies. Now, you um, some of these may also appeal to you depending on the vision that you have for your life and how you see your business fit into your life. And it's funny, I never given any of these ideas a thought when I was running my business up until last year. Why? Because I was really focused on making a million dollars. I won't, you know, I'll be transparent with you. That was my my entire focus. I really wanted to hit that million dollars. I wasn't thinking about how that business fit into my life. Um, whether I would enjoy doing certain things, like my business needed me to do things, my business partner needed me to do things, my clients, my market, my team, everybody needed me to do certain things. Hey, Silver, thanks so much. Uh, and you are in friends. That's awesome. Uzes friends. Interesting. I've never heard of that town. I mean, probably butchered how you pronounce it, but I'm glad you're here and you can see it. That's awesome. So, yeah. Um, you know, you would never want to attempt all of these at the same time or even all of them ever. You know, the goal of this class is just to open up a conversation for where does business growth come from? Where does it come from? And then next week, I'll be announcing a very cool five day challenge where we'll definitely identify your specific path to profit, your specific growth strategy that fits your skills, your abilities, your personality, your lifestyle, and your business vision, and your vision of your business in a way that it fits your life, right? I don't know, when I was in my 30s, for some reason, I never thought about these things. It's like, I'm starting a business. A business means you solve a problem for a particular group of people, and you have to get really good at communicating the solution or connecting with people that have the problems. That was my focus. And as I got into my 40s, um, that kind of changed for me. I do want more free time. I do want, I've always been about lifestyle, but I never experienced it at the level that I'm experiencing it recently. So definitely this is very, a very meaningful conversation for me to have with you guys. And I'm hoping that you will resonate with this as well. And I feel like by saying that I have 17 years of business experience, I position myself as this internet marketing dinosaur because I started when it was two, 2001. Gosh, um, sitesell.com was still around. I don't know if it's still around right now, but they were teaching you how to make your knowledge sell, make your site sell, make your ebook sell, like all these products, right? Uh, and actually, my very first product, I, I put it next to me. Oh, hello. Hello, Facebook. Suddenly, I went out of focus. Let's see if I can refocus myself. Oh, there we go. Maybe that will help. Yay, my magic worked. <laughs> This is the product I was going to show you. It's a little CD called Create Your First Business Website in 10 Days. I'm afraid to move now because I'm going to go out of focus again. So I'll be like really um, gentle as I move. And that actually has never happened before on my end. I've seen other people have a blurry focus or um, 
unfocus the videos. So um, there's a lot of lessons that I learned, good lessons for my success. And there's a lot of lessons I learned from my failures too. So a lot of it is going to go into this whole idea of identifying your specific strategy. So next week, look for an email from me where I'm going to invite you for a five day challenge where we will uncover your specific path to profit. Now, as you listen to these 26 strategies, what I want you to do, and hopefully you have a notepad in front of you, either it's on the computer or if you're writing down uh, on a notepad, that's great as well. What I want you to do is write each idea or strategy or concept. These are going to be different ones. Some are going to be a little bit more tactical. Others are going to be con conceptual and others are going to be like bigger strategies. Write each of them down and put a star next to the ones that you've done before and put two stars next to those that you have not tried, but you feel drawn to them, right? Like, yeah, I haven't done that before, but I want to. I feel some interest in because that is a big sign that there's something in that strategy that really draws you in. And that's a good sign. That's like the initial decision maker for you. If you feel drawn to it, do it. Um, you know, just about a month ago, two months ago, I didn't even, I wouldn't even get on camera to do Facebook lives. And then somebody ran a challenge and I forced myself for 21 days to get in front of camera and do this. And what I noticed over time is I was uh, like, I was getting better and more comfortable. But the initial reason that I even jumped into it is because I was drawn to it. I could have said, you know what? Not for me. That's not my way. That doesn't feel like I can leverage my um, skills, my natural abilities. Maybe I don't communicate in video format. I don't know. But something drew me to it. Probably the fact that I love to teach. I'm a music teacher, but by education, uh, even though it was 25 years ago that I came as a, you know, classically trained music teacher from Soviet Ukraine. Uh, but um, yeah, let's jump in. Um, I, I want to, I want you to make this list. And anytime you have an observation or a question, go ahead and pop it into the comments. And what I'll be able to do that is show it just like this. Here, Pam, you get another little feature. Uh, for your name. So I can show your comments, your ideas, anything, anytime you have an aha moment, pop it right into the comments and I'll be able to show it. So let's get started. And I said, again, some of them, these are very generic, very general. Some of them are more specific, uh, but the idea is to make you think, where does growth come from? I was sitting having lunch, having dinner with a friend of mine who's very successful. You may know um, Justin Livingston. And we were well, I was arguing with him. I was saying, but Justin, all I need to do to grow my business is this. Let's see if you can see it. It's to do more marketing. So if you're taking notes right now, just write down more marketing. Like, have you ever thought that business growth comes from more marketing? That's totally how I saw it. Like you market more, you get more, you, you grow your business, right? So that's the one that we, we're going to go really fast with this one. Does business growth come from doing more marketing at certain stages. Absolutely. At some stages, it might actually hurt your business. There are always times to pause the marketing and do some other things. Right. And so again, this is where you, you just have kind of have to decide. So more marketing was number one. My daughter did made these beautiful cards and they're so easy to read. Um, I feel great being able to just use them for you here. Um, so, more marketing could grow your business depending on where you are. Here's another one. Getting better at sales. I really feel like if you um, focus on simply improving your sales skills, you could grow your business. I mean, you could get more clients, right? You could communicate your value better. So sales skills as a strategy, um, improving your sales skills can definitely grow your business depending on where you are. Maybe you don't even want to sell. I, I've talked to a lot of coaches who, you know, coaches, speakers, uh, people who sell expertise, they don't want to sell. They just want somebody to sell for them. They want a, a partner who does sales. They want um, referrals. So they don't necessarily have to really do a lot of heavy selling, right? So, but improving sales skills could result in growing your business. Here's the next one. 
brand, working on your brand. So to me, working on your brand means having a stronger, more clear message, more compelling promise, appealing to your ideal clients that you want to reach, becoming more attractive and more professional to the right um you're going to be becoming more appealing to the right opportunities. You're going to capture more opportunities when you work on your brand. So there, are, there is a time in your business when you simply want to start working on improving your brand, on strengthening your brand, on clarifying your brand. Because um, especially if you're at the beginning stages, a lot of times your message is very general, like improve your life, um, lose weight. Yeah, but what is your message how are you unique what is your brand what do people feel and i'm not a brand expert i've actually had uh danielle miller here you know there's a lot of um people who will um be able to help you with your brand but that is something that could grow your business potentially right here's one of my favorites a big launch big launch let's see there we go what is a big launch to me a big launch means uh in a well, a launch, first of all, is an event or a series of events, right? And you build up to it with uh, promotions, videos, free giveaways, um, maybe with partners, like a promotional partner. So a big launch, can it grow your business? Absolutely. Now, that's one of my favorite strategies because it has worked for me. Um, it really leverages my um, d- my interest my passion around creating something interesting something new something unique being able to share the story behind why i'm creating something so a launch to me is a very exciting strategy and um anytime i wanted to grow my business i resort to doing a big launch it doesn't mean that that's the right strategy for you and it, if it is for you it doesn't mean that you have to do it the way you see other people do it so i wanted you to, to just think about it and i'm curious any any thoughts, any aha moments, any takeaways so far, any observations as to how you react to any of these strategies? I know we haven't gotten to specifics. I've only shared, let's see, my cards. I only shared four. But please share any of your observations or, or insights that are coming for you as you're listening to these. Maybe some, some experience that you're having, right, that you want to share. All right, let's talk about the next one. This is a big one, so I'm going to, that's why I paused. Creating new products, programs, or services. Can it grow your business? Absolutely. Expanding your product line, it can absolutely do that. Can it also make your your business absolutely chaotic and crazy and unfocused? Yes, it can do that too. So there's a time when you create new offerings to grow your business. Can business growth come from adding new products, new programs, new services, new membership sites. Um, maybe there is an offering that you've noticed that all your you know, majority of your clients are asking for um, and you decide to finally create it. One of the things I've always wanted to do is add a done for you department or done for you uh, branch to my company where I teach people how to do things, but I don't do it for them. Wouldn't it be great if I then had a team of people who took it from there and helped them create their materials and uh, products and uh, websites and things like that? So I've always considered that I've never gotten into it. It felt more like complexity to me that I wasn't willing to take on. But that was always an idea in the back of my mind. And maybe someday I will. I don't know. Maybe if I find the right uh, partner company to do this with so that it's easy and profitable and hands off for me. So adding new products, programs, and services can absolutely be one of those things that grows your company, grows your business, right? And by the way, when I talk about growth, I really talk about revenue because some people look at, you know, how do you grow your business? Well, what does it mean to grow? Does it mean like, you know, having a big team or um, having a bigger brand where you spend money on advertising, which one of the things we're going to talk about, like, what does it mean to grow? To me, growth means you grow revenue. We're not even talking about net profit because that's a whole other topic. But all of these strategies I'm sharing potentially will 
um, grow your revenue, right? Let's talk um, about the next one. Can business growth come from building a bigger list? Or for some of you, maybe building a list, any list, right? Let's see. I can't see if I um, if this works. There you go. Yeah. Aha moment. Silver says growth defined as revenue. Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody talks about growing a business, but what does it really mean? Does it mean growing the size of the team? Uh, maybe for some people, growth means, hey, I got a brick and mortar location now. I've grown my business. Now I have a physical location. Well, that's not growth. That's an overhead. That's expensive. That is, to me, is more maintenance and more responsibilities. So, yeah, thank you, Silver, for pointing that out as well. So can, again, let me just go back to this, can having or building a mailing list result in growing your business and business growth? Is that something that you could be focusing on to grow? Absolutely. Um, it's, again, growing a list is not priority for everybody. Maybe if you are better uh in person and connecting and speaking from stage and um, networking events uh, is where you get your clients, then maybe that's what you do, right? Uh, then maybe mailing list, having a mailing list is not as important. However, for me, having a mailing list always meant being able to create something and promote something, create and promote. For my business model, for my personality, that felt really great. So I'm hoping you're putting stars you know, one star if you've tried it before, two stars if you haven't, but you want to try that and you feel drawn to it, right? Um, all right, so mailing list can definitely build, it, growing your mailing list or focusing, we're talking about where you focus, right? You could focus on any of these strategies, any of these ideas. So focusing on growing your list could absolutely grow your business. It could also overwhelm you and drain you of resources, if you're not ready to monetize that list, right? There's a lot about the monetization. You can have a list and just keep sending free information and your business revenue will not grow. So that's something to think about. All right, let's look at this one. Increasing your, let me see if you can see it, increasing your visibility as a way to grow your business. Increasing your visibility means that you just focus on being everywhere. Um, when I started my previous company, we really wanted visibility. We wanted a lot of, we wanted to be everywhere. We gave interviews everywhere. We um, promoted through partners, through ads, through social media. Um, we talked about it. We would go, my, my business partner would speak at live events somewhere just to gain visibility. So could that be, could focusing on increasing visibility grow your business? Absolutely. So again, is that, does that feel like the thing you should focus on right now? So the flip side of that, you can increase your visibility and still not grow your revenue and still not, um, increase your income. Why? Because maybe you don't have the right products and programs, or maybe you don't have a product at all. Right? Maybe you're just not ready because increasing visibility has to happen at the right time. You need to have a message. You need to have a very clear message that people resonate with. You need to have something to talk about. What conversation do you want to create? For example, when I started Simplicity Circle, I hired um, somebody to help me uh, get on podcast shows it, it's because I did want visibility and I wanted um, to build an audience because that was my focus. But I needed to have a very clear message. I didn't want to just be interviewed. I wanted to have a clear message to, to share and to talk about. But I also wanted to make sure that when I do have visibility, that I have somewhere to send people. For example, my free ebook or my free video series, right? So I set up a little page that invited people to opt in after they heard me, right? Um, Kim says, um, I save time by being visible in certain groups on a consistent basis. Yes, so you've been strategically, you're building your visibility in a very strategic way. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that, Kim. Um, and 
and you're saying that was a great idea to hire someone to get you on podcast shows. Yeah, that's definitely a time saver. It's not inexpensive, but in the long run, it is very much worth it. Um, all right, so increasing visibility. Now, this one is number eight. We are number eight. Let me see if you can see it. This one is upgrade your marketing materials. So what that means can business growth come from upgrading your marketing? Yes. How so? Because if you have a more, if you have a homemade website, if you have ugly videos and that's all you have, ugly videos meaning like really homemade and like, you know, where the camera is shaking or um, the resolution is not high enough for people to, you, you may be losing some opportunities. Um, so upgrading your marketing material simply means that you see that you're losing business by uh, pushing people away by your homemade presence, visual wording. So upgrading to me meant um, <laughs> instead of doing my videos in the basement with my lights that I purchased, uh, to me, it meant hiring a professional audio video company and having a script and a teleprompter and really creating something a little bit more polished. Um, so having professional uh, materials, uh, upgrading materials to me also meant that instead of creating my web pages in the little program like uh, Dreamweaver or Netscape Composer, I'm really dating myself back to 2000. Um, using something like lead pages that give you beautiful templates that make you look like a web design star, right? Yeah, Silver says that the quality of how you present it is upgrade, you are presented is upgrade to me, yes. So like how you present yourself, because if you are only using homemade looking materials, um, you will push away some people. And if that is your goal, then I guess it's your decision, but you need to be aware of that. So upgrading your marketing is absolutely somewhere where business growth, revenue growth can come from. All right, here's number nine. Let's see, I'm making sure that I see that. So I know, Kim, you're going to like this one. Autopilot systems. What does that mean? So this is where you can actually have a really big leap in your business growth when you automate things. And what that means is that, you know, you focus on automation. You've gone, you're, you've done your stuff, you have the content, you have your materials. Now you need to automate it, create automated systems because that will allow you to leverage your time and do more in less time, make more money in less time. And what that might mean is evergreen marketing and evergreen delivery, right? Maybe creating a funnel or automating your follow-up Somebody said to me that simplicity to them means set it and forget it. I love that because that is absolutely one way to achieve simplicity in your business, right? So automated or autopilot systems, um, a lot of times that could mean automating your traffic. For example, I have recently started using Facebook ads as recently as this week. So I'm excited to see what it can do because if... I can put my traffic on autopilot. That means I can market less. I can do launches less. I can worry about visibility less. So it will solve a lot of different problems. Um, Rita says, let's see. All right now I have a list of one and I have joined the Divine Biz giveaway to start the process of building a list. So yes, um, that's absolutely a way to grow your list. And having a list of one simply means that you haven't really been focusing on building your list. This is why I love teaching these 26 strategies, because I want you to identify the areas that you want to focus on. Um, it is totally your choice. It's your decision. Um, if you focus on list building, you will build your list because you'll find a way. You'll find many ways to do that. Uh, Bebe says, uh, funnels can only be entered after a strong foundation is created. Absolutely, which is why it drives me crazy when somebody says, Milana, did you ever green your business yet? 
And I'm thinking, I just launched my new business back in March. I am still running my program live and I'm getting feedback from people. I'm still fully engaged and present in every group, every program, every Facebook community that I'm a part of because I want that feedback. I'm still building, creating funnels and evergreening yourself, as some people calling it, before you have a proven program and marketing materials that you created doesn't make sense, right? I'm going to talk about that at the end of the class when I want to bring it all together for you. So be sure to stay here because I don't want to overwhelm you and you're going to leave and you're going to think, well, that's not simplicity. I'm going to give you something that will make all the difference for you. So stay, um, hang, hang on, hang in here with me and I'll show you how to find simplicity in all of this. And again, if you recently joined this class and you didn't hear me say this, you want to put a star next to the strategy or idea that you have already done and two stars next to the strategy or idea that you haven't done yet, but you feel attracted to it somehow, right? Um, uh, Bebe says, explain, and I, if I'm butchering your name, please forgive me. I'm reading it as Bebe, which I like. It sounds great to me. I explain the concept of evergreening. Evergreening simply means that when you have your program and you designed your, your let's say, your webinar and a series of emails and videos, now you can put it on autopilot and send traffic to it, maybe from Facebook ads, right? Like that is the most common way to automate your traffic. And evergreen means that you don't need to be present. It's always running, it's there. It's the anti-launch model, right? It's, you know, a launch is something usually you do once or twice a year. Evergreen means it runs all year long. People find your ad, um, you know, like all of that. Yes, and you do need foundation before the evergreen, absolutely. Like that is, you need a foundation in terms of your message, your uh, your clarity, what you're selling. You need to know who you're selling to and why they will be triggered enough to get into your funnel, so to speak, right? All right, let's move on. The next one is also something I've done and I love it. And I've actually done it several times. And I see a lot of people have joined this class. So if you want to say hello and where you are joining me from, please do so. I see a lot of people on the line right now, on the line. I'm so used to using the conference line. Uh, a lot of people watching this live cast. All right, here's the next one. Coaching system. What that means is that, you know, especially if you're a coach or if you develop some sort of a methodology or training you create a coaching system that can now be delivered and used by other coaches. So you create a coaching system and hire coaches. So I should have actually written here, um, you know, coaching system and hire coaches. What I mean by that is that you may want to grow your business by way of leveraging your creativity and your expertise as the creator of, of a system, of a product, of a program, of a methodology, and then train other people in that very same, um, uh, in that very same method. So I'm reading comments. I'm getting a little distracted. Hey, Jordan, I'm going to show you here from Los Angeles. Nice to see you here. And Joanna is here. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys for uh, a shout out here. So creating a coaching system simply means that like for me, it's perfect because I personally don't like the one-on-one -on -one coaching model. So I like creating the system. I like creating the curriculum and then having other coaches actually work with people, um, you know, through the system. For example, one of the things that I am planning to, to add um, or to incorporate into my business is I have created a simplicity business experience and it's a five module, five week program. So I love the delivery piece of it, but I know that later people will want some sort of support. And so to me, having coaches, maybe one or two coaches that I can add to my business who resonate with simplicity, who love coaching, who love digging deeper with people, like that to me would be a perfect business model, right? So um, I think that that's, I, I, I'm putting, well, I, I'm putting one star and two stars next to it because I both have done it before and I love the idea. So I'm attracted to this idea, right? So if you have created a curriculum 
of some kind or a tool or methodology, but you don't necessarily want to offer one-on-one -on -one coaching or even a small group coaching, you could have another person, another coach um, deliver it for you. And while they're delivering and, and helping you generate revenue, you can market and you can create something else and you can continue to develop it, right? Uh, let's see. Beba says, I'm a leadership coach, life coach, cybersecurity coach, a specific methodology, and I am in launch mode uh, in the zero to 10K level at the bottom of the pyramid, developing my foundation. Yeah, I like the cybersecurity. Wow. That is a very important field right now. I, I wish you good luck because I'm, I'm hoping you're reaching the people who need you and the companies that need you. Um, I have a target avatar, a currency and timeline, which I believe. Uh, I will deliver it. That's awesome. All, having a plan is great um, like that. So create a coaching system and hire coaches is one way, is one place where business growth can come from because you can leverage your creativity, your talent for developing something and hire other people to actually deliver it and work with people deeper. People who love it, by the way. I've always thought like, uh, felt that, well, if I don't enjoy one-on-one -on -one coaching, why would I have other people go through this struggle? And then I realized that there are plenty of people who love one-on-one -on -one coaching and are feeling very grateful that someone else created a curriculum that they can incorporate it with their clients. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. The next one is building a team. Can business growth come from building a team? The answer is absolute yes. In fact, that's, that was one of the pieces of my conversation with Justin Livingston uh, a couple of years ago is that you need a team. You need to grow a team to grow your business. And I'll be honest with you that to me, uh, building a team felt, I was conflicted about that because I didn't want a big team. I didn't want the responsibility and the time investment and the energy that I felt that it's going to take from me um, to, to, you know, to, to have a team that does things. At the same time, I knew that without hiring other people, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I wanted to do. So here's how I approach building a team today. This is the simplicity approach. If it feels right to you to hire a specific person for a specific role, then go with it. If it doesn't feel to you like the next natural step in growing your business, then that's not the right time for you right now, right? Building a team for the sake of building your team is not going to grow your business. It's only going to overwhelm you. You're going to have to create work for your team, right? But if it feels like, you know, I, I recently made a decision to run Facebook ads. And so I went ahead and hired a person who would do my Facebook ads. I didn't approach it from the perspective of, oh, I need to build my team. No, I simply said, I need somebody who will do this. And to me, that felt more like a simplicity. Um, uh, Beba says, I call it growing a tribe. Yeah, like anything you do to attract people, it absolutely feels like growing a tribe. I love the idea of growing a simplicity tribe or simplicity entrepreneurship tribe. Yeah. And I love what you said, Beba. You said one-on-one -on -one is a slow process, too slow for me. Actually, I can totally relate to that. And, and please, no judgment. Everybody loves what they love. I think that people who love one-on-one -on -one coaching, it is absolute delight for them to do this. Um, but for people who love creating and then leveraging it, then one-on-one -on -one work will feel slow. So I totally relate to that. There, there are times when I do enjoy one-on-one, -on -one, but it has to be the right person. It has to be the right conversation for me. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. All right, here's another one. For some of you, Growth can come from doing more public speaking. And all this means is that you're going to start focusing on getting more speaking gigs, on creating that sizzling sheet, speaker sheet that will attract more speaking gigs, reaching out to event hosts, uh, event organizers, event planners, um, you know, just the outreach, local and global, for you to get more uh, speaking gigs. How does 
uh, public speaking grow your business while you reach more, you know, bigger audiences, you are able to possibly sell from stage as you're speaking. If not selling, then you can collect names and emails and build your list, right? That can be one way that you build your list for those of you that want to focus on it. Um, and when you start speaking, you also, especially if you're good at it and people really connect with you, what's going to happen is you're going to attract more speaking opportunities, right? So you start growing your audience. And when you grow your audience, you always um, have this amazing opportunity to grow your business, right? To grow your revenue. The next one is also something that I've done a lot, live event. I've actually been running a live event at least once a year since 2007 and there were times uh, that I've done two live events a year um, how can a live event grow your business well very simply um, it, it is important for your branding that you now have expanded it's it's almost like the next step the next level to me having a live event always felt like going from uh going uh, coming out of hiding sort of um, because I'm always on my computer behind the computer on the internet and so um, go, doing a live event meant that I'm okay I'm here I'm not at my computer anymore I'm not hiding in my office anymore so uh, doing a live event creating a live event or a live conference maybe as an annual event that could do a lot for your brand uh, as, as far as elevating you to the next level. There's a lot of people who do internet marketing and, and sell information products. But the moment you say yes to your own live event, you suddenly are seen as the next level, at the next level of growth. You are seen as the mover and shaker. So for branding, um, it is definitely something that you want to um, consider. Let me take a sip of water. And Bebe says, the best Facebook ad is an ugly Facebook ad. It's disruptive and attracts more people. Let me put that on the screen here. I like that tip. That's what I'm learning as well. The best Facebook ad is an ugly ad. It's disruptive and attracts more people. So what you're saying is that when your materials look too polished, maybe that's not the best way to market today. When people want real, authentic, right? Like a uh, messy room. Actually, I'm... I would never go live if my office was messy. I think I'd be too embarrassed. So I created my office uh, in a way that no mess is allowed. All the mess is outside, like in the kitchen, in the living room, in the family room, in the basement, in the laundry room. This room is kept pristine and keeps me very focused. But uh, totally get what you're saying. The um, non-polished or ugly marketing material sometimes can actually work for you, not against you. I love that idea. All right. So and also the other way that a live event can help you grow, of course, is that you can invite other speakers who will present their offers and you can share, you know, can split the revenue from their sales. So that's a, um, a multi-speaker event model. Uh, or you could make an offer to get people into your own high-level program, right? Um, and, you know, let's face it, uh, having an event is just another product or program that you can create, that you can offer, right? Um, I love your tips, uh, live events. Bring three types into the room, the wonder, the explorer, and the seeker. Huh. Yeah, I would want uh, to explore this. I would want to explore this a little bit more to understand. But yeah, people, I have asked recently, why do you come to a live event? And people give all kinds of reasons. I used to go to live events exclusively to learn information. That was my biggest reason, which is why when everybody else was networking out in the hall, I would be sitting and watching the speaker and taking notes. That has changed for me a little bit um, because information is so easily and readily available online. Uh, that I do go, if I go to events, it's mostly for making connections. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move on to the next one. And actually, this one is very much related to the last one, to the live event. And that is start a mastermind program. And I will tell you that this one is number 14. We are up to 14 strategies now. So starting a high ticket mastermind program 
And the reason it's connected to a live event is because a lot of times people will do a live event, will hold the live event with the purpose of filling their high ticket mastermind program. But it doesn't need to be that way. I've seen people fill their high ticket mastermind programs by holding webinars, by holding, um, by doing like an app, by application process through videos, through email, through sale, uh, like a sales call strategy or strategy session, right? So having a mastermind program, how will that increase or grow your revenue, grow your business? Well, very simply by allowing you to generate more revenue per client, right? I'm selling a $37 product. And of course, um, I need to sell 10,000 of these before I can make any decent amount of money, right? At the same time, I can sell uh, a, a, a a spot in my high level mastermind program for $25,000 a year. And that's just one person. So if that feels like the right thing for you, definitely um, put two stars next to it. And I'm curious, has, is anybody currently a member of a mastermind of an expensive mastermind? I don't know, anywhere between 5,000 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, if you are, say yes. I would love to just like see how many of you are members of a paid mastermind program where they charge you like for a year, um, you know, like intense program. Um, I've always been a member of some sort of a mastermind. And the reason that I'm not today is because uh, somebody actually shared the same idea with me is that I don't want to... Um, a lot of external influence. I feel like not that I'm done learning, but I feel like I have allowed a lot of external influence into my life to where I no longer hear this or this, where I no longer feel my own voice, my own brain, mind, heart, soul, whatever you call it. And so I want to take some time away from any mastermind or big coaching programs um, and so I could hear my own voice and my own ideas as my coach said, Milana, why do you need all these other people with all these other ideas? You have your own ideas. Now she said that in a British accent, which I cannot replicate, but that made sense to me is I do have my own ideas and everybody has their own ideas. And the more ideas I listen to what happens is I have this mess in my head and I'm sure you can guys relate because you are in simplicity circle. And Beba says, I always listen to myself. Yes. Yes. I learned to do that recently because um, you'll even see some people will try to replicate exactly the advice given by someone else that they see success successful. And that is actually going to create a lot of more complexity in your business and in your life. Yes, to your own ideas, trust yourself. And Sheila, I also see that you are in a mastermind. Yeah, there's always been a time for me where I wanted to be in a mastermind. It was almost like a drug to me. I needed to be surrounded by mastermind conversations in order to inspire my own ideas. And now, well, I have changed, I think, in a way that I'm more... Um, hmm. It's not that I'm more overwhelmed. What happens is I resist a lot of other people's ideas because they don't align with my own. And I just feel like I need to listen to my own voice right now. That may change. Um, I think that once I reach an, uh, another level in my business and in my consciousness, in my personal growth, I will want to be in the mastermind again. So mastermind program. All right, here's another one. This has to do with leverage. Less one on one. And Baba, for you and me, this is perfect, right? Because we don't do a lot of it. Uh, and what that means is like, if you want to grow your business, then shifting away from one on one clients and more towards group delivery and working with clients more in a group format, that can grow your business because you can take more clients, you can. Um, you can run multiple groups at the same time. You can run multiple groups a year. It just allows you to leverage your time better. So I think this is very self-explanatory. And you can still offer one-on-one -on -one services. However, you can increase your pricing because now you're putting a premium on your one-on-one -on -one time, right? Um, 
I don't know that maybe somebody listening thinking, well, I can't do a group. My clients will not want to be in a group and that's okay. Maybe you just need a group where you teach something and then you offer one-on-one coaching on the back end. But the bottom line is when you start shifting away from one-on-one, you are going to start making more money because you're going to be in the group environment and you're going to be making more money per hour in any given hour, right? So we are uh, now up to idea 15. We have about 10 more. If this is helpful in terms of getting you to think and open up, please tell me, yes, helpful. I just want to know that I am um, making you open up the side of your brain maybe that hasn't really been active <laughs> up until now or somewhere where you get getting aha moments and you're thinking and you're evaluating your business please give me a yes i want to know that this is helping you see your business a little differently um so i would really appreciate um thumbs up and uh, you know what i can't even see any thumbs up or anything um unless I'm looking at Facebook group right here. So yeah, let me know if this is um, impactful, helpful, useful information. I'd love to get that feedback from you um, when you get a chance. And I'm gonna move on to the next one. And this is partners or promotional partners, I rather. So getting more promotional partners will absolutely grow your business. In fact, that's how that, you know, focusing on um, getting more partners, more promotional partners uh, is how I grew my business for many, many, many years between 2004 and 2016. That was I would say the primarily the primary strategy that I used um, to grow my business, to get clients, to make money, to grow my list, to launch my products and programs, to fill my events, to fill my programs. Um, yeah, so getting more promotional partners is one of the top strategies that I've used. I think without opening the Pandora box right now, I will tell you that joint venture partnerships have changed over the years. When I first started, it was a little different. Um, and now I see that it's a lot more competitive. You have to be a top partner in order to get the attention of top partners. Um, yeah, so I don't want to open a Pandora box here because I literally just left the company that was whose entire focus was joint venturing. And I am finding now that I'm not as attracted to that idea anymore the way that it's done traditionally, which is why I've opened myself up to um, doing more social media, starting a Facebook group, doing Facebook ads, um, getting on podcasts more connecting with people more versus just like hiding behind my computer and leveraging, 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 having my partners work for me. Um, oh, thank you, Joanna. I like all of your content. Yay. And Jordan says, you're always a cup of coffee uh, for my brain, a little pick me up. Awesome. I love hearing that. I like being the stimulator for your brain. Um, are you going to write this down somewhere? Blog? Post, perhaps if you're asking about this list um yeah that i know i haven't thought about that let me actually make a note before i forget um post all 26 ideas and strategies for sure yeah thank you for that uh, idea joanna um more personal now sheila says i like your new methods and i'm having a lot more fun too i think a lot of marketing strategies that i've used in the past have made me nervous. Um, it would make me focus on perfectionism. It's like, I have to be perfect. Like, uh, Beba, you just asked, how do you approach partners? Well, I had to be perfect <laughs> in my mind. You don't have to be really, but in my mind, I did. I felt like I needed just the right opt-in pages, just the right topic for my webinar, just the right size of the list so that the partner sees me as an equal player you know, um, I needed the right reputation. I needed the right joint venture pitch. 
Uh, and John says, yes, I'm assuming you're answering the question about whether this is a helpful class. So thank you. Um, but when we are connecting like we are right now, I find myself, uh, I, I find that I'm able to relax more and be able just to be myself a little more. And even if I stumble, I don't judge myself as harshly. I think all that judgment is in my head and a lot of women can relate, especially women. I find, right? We judge ourselves all the time. How is it different from before? Um, clarify your question for me, Beba. How is it different for now from before? Are you talking about partnerships? Um, I think I started answering that question. To me, joint ventures are different a little bit now because it's more competitive. More people are doing more joint ventures. Um, and if you are on multiple mailing lists, what's going to happen is you're going to start getting a lot of emails within a short period of time of somebody's launching uh, from many different people. So you're going to start getting 17 emails a day about the same webinar, the same launch, the same product. And if you, if it's your product you're launching, it's great for you. But the people on the other side of the equation, the subscribers, they're getting really annoyed, inundated, overwhelmed. And so as I walked away from my business last year, I found myself on that other side. And suddenly I was like, oh, my God, somebody's doing a launch because I just get seven emails on this webinar. And all the emails are about the same thing. And I press delete, 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 delete on all of them. <laughs> right. So I want to find a different way to talk to my people. And I think that that actually burns your list out. In fact, when I left my business a year ago, I spent the next 12 months rebuilding my relationship with my list because I, I see that as list abuse. When you send out a promotion every week, sometimes twice a week, it is abuse, unfortunately. And what happens as a result of that, for me, what happened is I don't feel very good about how I do that marketing piece. But most importantly, my list is burnt out. And what happens is your open rate goes down. You know, if you have a list of 20,000 people and only a thousand of them actually open your emails, that's pretty low, right? That is list abuse, Jordan says. Yeah, totally. All right, let's move on. So you can get partners. Just be mindful of this idea that um, there are many ways to get partnerships and to structure your partnerships. Even as I see partnerships now as more like collaborations, as opposed to the tit for tat, you know, you help me and I help you. I see it more like, hey, I need this. And if you can give it to me, great. If not, that's okay. And if you can give it to me, I know you won't expect me to give, to give I know, the same kind of help. To you so it's a little bit more human based i think um and also you can promote other people and they can promote you uh, but do it in a way that creates a conversation so the way if you've been watching this group the way that i've been promoting other people is by having them on a facebook live and creating a, an interesting controversial cutting edge conversation i'm still promoting them but i'm doing it in a way that serves others that creates an interesting conversation all right, next one. Now, this is an interesting one, and this is a strategic one. This is either a yes or a no for you. And this is the one I want to talk about, adding a new niche. So if you've been marketing something to a particular niche in your business and you feel like you may be either maxing out your niche or you are missing out on opportunities, then maybe it is time to add a new niche market. For example, if I'm working with coaches, um, my market is a little bigger. It's coaches, authors, speakers, and entrepreneurs who sell expertise online. But let's say that I want to um, specifically go after lawyers. That would be an additional niche. Or financial consultants uh, or wealth managers. That would be another niche. Or let's say people who do live events. They could be coaches, authors, and speakers. But I could target specifically a group of people who do live events. So that would be adding a new niche. How can it grow your business? Well, I think the answer is obvious. It can absolutely um, add more revenue, add more clients to you, right? I'm going to go a little faster now. So um, just consider that adding a niche could be an idea uh, that where business growth comes from. 
All right, here's another one. And we are um, on number 18, publishing a book. Could publishing a book grow your business? Yes, it could. And I can tell you because I've done it. And this was published in 2007. And it ended up on a uh, best-selling list on Amazon under uh, business biographies. And this was number two. Coach your millions, help more people, make more money, live your ultimate lifestyle. Um, the brand, the, the message, the system. So this book actually has a system. And I'm not promoting this book because it's 10 years old. I have about 30 of these 30 copies in my closet. Um, I know you can get it on Amazon, but the whole idea is that publishing a book at the right time in your business can help you spread your message, reach more people, um, serve as a tool for aligning your potential clients with you. Uh, what I mean by this is anytime a, a, a potential client comes to me and says, I want to work with you, um, can I talk to you first? And I'll say, um, actually, how about you read my, my book first? And if you like it and you still want to work with me, then we'll talk. It's kind of like my prerequisite for people, right? But most importantly, it just allows you to spread your message, tell your story. Um, and this hasn't changed yet. Even though anybody can publish a book, being an author definitely increases your credibility and your you are an author and people admire and trust authors, right? And Beba says, I am in the process <laughs> of writing a book. The working title is 50 Shades of Cyber, who's been hacking you lately. I will buy your book on Kindle or Audible. It's not on Audible, actually. You know what, when I published it, Audible, I don't think Audible existed in 2007, did it? I don't know. It's really funny. I never considered putting an audible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the idea is that the book allows you to increase, to elevate you to a level of an author and expert. And so it, it elevates your brand, your, your expert status. So that's how it grows your business. Can business growth come from a book? Yes. Can it also take two years of your life? to write it and then not make you any money? Yes, that is true as well. And you can ask a lot of authors who will um, confirm that to be so. All right, here's another one. This is number 19, doing paid advertising. And I literally just started uh, doing that on Facebook, paid ads. I see uh, paid ad advertising strategy as a way to increase traffic that doesn't require me to convince partners to promote me, that doesn't require me to do a launch, you know, like more uh, automated way, uh, leverage my time. The ads are just doing their job, right? What I love about paid advertising is the fact that when I first started running my business, I um, came into the business with a mindset of not spending any money on advertising because they're promotional partners who can introduce you, they're referral partners, right? Um, you can write, you can create and publish free content. Why should I pay for traffic? Why should I buy advertising? And yet every traditional company up until internet marketing happened was advertising. It's the mindset of getting sales or getting customers without spending a penny on the front end, that was the mindset. And I think it's still the mindset of a lot of coaches, authors, speakers. Like, I don't want to pay for traffic. Why should I? When I can publish an article and clients will hire me. When I can get somebody to promote me and clients will hire me, right? This is the first time I actually had to go through a shift that it's okay to pay for, for advertising. In fact, if you can make your ads work for you, then you can scale them. You know, you start a little bit and then you increase your spending budget. Gosh, I sound so corporate when I say that spending budget or maybe very gov governmental when I say the spending budget. But when you find something that works, you can just scale it, right? With ads. Um, Rita says, I just added a new niche for my land. Healing as transformational catalyst, focus on realtors. Yes. 
with slow to sell properties, aligning the land with the perfect buyer. I love that. Um, yeah. So adding a, a niche definitely will help you another niche. And uh, Bebe, this is the last card that I showed. It was uh, paid ads, paid advertising, adding paid advertising. And it does require a mind shift because to me, paying to get clients sound a bit sound used to sound a bit well first of all very expensive and unnecessary but the person that i hired made me see that when i pay commissions to my partners i actually spend a lot more to get a client right so it requires a mind shift there all right here's a good one and this may be the right thing to do depending on where you are in your business this one is hiring salespeople. This is number 20. The reason I love this and the reason that this could be the right strategy for you is because you may have a product, program, or service that is successful, that is already running, and all you need is to sell more of it. And all you need is to put salespeople in front of that product, program, or service. Uh, people who can allow you to communicate your value of that product, program, and service to potential clients. When is it not the right time for you to hire salespeople? When you have nothing to sell or when you, what you're selling is not a system or not um, tangible? I feel like you need to have something tangible, something that can be explained to people. Can you sell coaching? You know, coaching is very intangible, absolutely. But you still need to understand what tangible results people are going to want to get, right? So putting salespeople in, the, in front of your business is a really cool idea. And if it's the right salesperson or the right team of salespeople, um, you could absolutely grow your business. The reason that I haven't hired a salesperson yet is because I'm still um, growing and tweaking my offerings and my programs. So I want to, you know, I want to have a salesperson that I can hand in like a sales manual or a sales script or we can work on it together uh, or hear the top questions that people ask. So I want to have, I want to be ready for a salesperson, right? Um a salesperson is also great to hire when you have testimonials. In other words, you need sales tools to give to your salesperson, right? But hiring salespeople can definitely grow your business. This is something that can definitely um, add to the idea, right? Um, to, to the business growth because you're going to make more money. You're going to sell more. Um, you know, a little bit of a, on the flip side is if it's a highly professional experience and a great salesperson, they're going to want a lot of money. They want, you know, 30%, 20%, 50%. I don't know. Um, and if you also are using promotional partners and you're paying commissions, it all adds up. And actually, that's something that I've experienced in my previous company where we would actually end up with net revenue of 30%. After we would pay the salesperson and our promotional partners, we would be left with 30%. And it was like, I don't want to work for 30%. I feel like it would be easier to just promote someone else's product or program and get commissions. This is my business. I want to make a lot more than 30%. So it really depends, like some considerations for you to think about, but it's great to have a salesperson. Um, you could also go halfway. You could have somebody on your team, like a virtual assistant, customer service person to do some selling for you. So that's the compromise. Maybe they're not necessarily a professional, highly experienced salesperson, but they could help you sell. It's going to cost you a lot less. And maybe you develop that person into a salesperson. They just need to understand your messaging, right? Um, yeah, okay. Next one is also something I love and I've done a lot. Community, starting your own membership website or a community. How can it grow your business? Well, uh, business growth can come from a community because you're engaging people a lot more. It can also, you know, if it's a paid membership site, you can generate membership dues every month or every year. 
um, you can make offers within your membership. And most importantly, you just connect, engage with people a lot more so that when you do announce something bigger, something more significant in, in pricing, then people will buy from you as well, right? Uh, but also, I love the idea of a membership site is because it is recurring revenue. You sell something once and it keeps generating revenue every single month, right? So that's something that can grow your business. And actually, so you could have a membership site where you charge 20 bucks a month or $197 a month if it's like a coaching club where it's not only information and community, but it's also where you do some coaching. Maybe you allow people to call you for some laser coaching days, uh, laser coaching sessions. Yep, building your tribe and community um, is exactly what I'm talking about. All right, here's the next one. And that is starting uh, your own podcast, your own YouTube channel, or your own online radio show. Again, it goes, it elevates your brand, it builds your audience. And what's interesting is that I attempted to start my own podcast twice in my business experience. Both times it flopped. I am not a podcast person as far as being a host. I love sharing my own ideas and I love short interviews on video like Facebook lives, but to be consistently publishing and finding guests and researching guests and doing this all show thing, I don't know, it just didn't feel, something was off for me with this strategy. So I started and quit both times. And so I learned my lesson that having my own podcast is not for me. But if you are attracted to this idea, absolutely, it can grow your business because a podcast lives on iTunes where you can get a lot of people to sign up um, for it. Uh, a YouTube channel lives on YouTube with a huge uh, level of audience, right? Um, online uh, radio show, blog, talk, radio. Uh, you always hear blog, talk, radio. So that's another way to grow your business and your audience. So any show, any podcast or video show basically grows your audience and your reach, right? And people start connecting with you a little differently. All right. We are um, uh, on our last few. Here's a more advanced one. And yet it may be the right one for you creating your own certification program. This is number 23. Um, this basically is like a train the trainer program or licensing program. If you developed a methodology or a workshop or a tool, then you could leverage your creativity by licensing it to others. It's almost like having a coaching system and then hiring coaches to deliver it, except this is a certification program. The difference is that um, you could certify other people and they could go out and deliver and use that um, in their own business. In fact, one of the tools I'm using within my Simplicity Business Experience program is a tool. Uh, it's a business evaluation assessment that I licensed from someone that created it. And I loved it because it makes me look smart. It makes me feel like I know what I'm talking about when I talk to clients. It gives me a framework and a tool to, to work with people to help them um, see better results. So I licensed a tool. I became certified deliverer of that tool. So potentially you could do the same thing. Um, certification program. I know a friend of mine, Sheila Paxton, uh, not only teaches you how to do that, uh, but um, can actually help you get your certification program um, accredited by the ICF, International Coach Federation. Um, I'll put her name here in comments in case you guys are interested in how to do this. Sheila Paxton, and she does certification program formula. I think that's what it's called. You can find her on Facebook. But yeah, adding your certification program means that you're able to leverage um, your creativity. Yeah, I can show my own comment here. This is fun. Uh, I am I am on your screen twice right now in, in a very redundant way. <laughs> um, so you can create your own certification program as a way of growing your brand. I mean, would you rather work with somebody who um, is just a coach, um, not to diminish the value of being a coach, but somebody who just a coach or somebody who created a coaching tool 
and, and is now certifying others in it. So you're also elevating your status as a coach, as a professional, as an expert, right? That's how I see um, certification can grow your business. All right. Just a few more left. We have three more. And then I'll give you instructions, very short instructions for how to make sense of it all and how to bring simplicity into all of it. So here's the next one, and that is content marketing. Um, if you love creating content as a way of articles, again, podcasts, interviews, videos, whatever, um, then using that content to um, generate organic traffic through blogging, through articles, through videos, uh, what that means is your content, when you put it out there, Google loves it. And, uh, you know, uh, when you're publishing content on your blog, uh, on SlideShare, on Quora, like all these content sharing websites, that is one way to build traffic organically. I am definitely not an expert on it, but I do know that a lot of people have great success with it. I have attempted to do this. And some of you may be actually surprised to hear that I am not a content developer. I like to share certain concepts, ideas, and, and frameworks. But to me, creating content is intense. While someone else can punch out a, a five-page article in a couple hours. I never understood that ability because I don't have that. But if you are a content uh, passionado, then creating content and using it to generate organic traffic uh, can absolutely be a way to grow your business because then you're going to be everywhere. Um, let's say that people are researching how to deal with anxiety and stress and you are an expert on it. Um, then anytime somebody Googles how to um, reduce anxiety, your blog shows up, your articles, your names, your videos, right? Um, an example of that is I go to YouTube. Um, I started recently doing tapping, EFT. I don't know if you guys are familiar. It can freak some people out. My husband was certainly freaked out when he saw me do this. <laughs> he started teasing me around that. But every time I go to YouTube and I type in tapping for uh, anxiety or tapping for fears of public speaking, uh, tapping for this or that, this one particular guy always comes up in the results. It's because he created hundreds of videos on every single topic you can think about. Um, tapping on fear of parenting, tapping for uh, driving uh, or flying, you know, uh, fear of flying. Like he's everywhere. So that is organic traffic for him. His videos immediately come up on Google, on YouTube, right? So that is organic content marketing traffic. But don't ask me about that because I'm not an expert. And if that is of interest to you, um, that's something that you can definitely look at uh, as content marketing. All right. Here's the one I just started doing recently, and that is expanding your social media. Final stretch. I have one more to share. Social media, expanding your social media presence. I've done that, and so far I'm loving it. Um, ask me again in about a year. I'll tell you what that looks like for me. But expanding your social media presence simply means that you are more present with the people, with the people. Because when you are, even if you do have a list, what happens is it's a very much of a one-on-one, -on -one, um, I'm sorry, one-way communication. I send an email to my list, you know, to my 40, 42,000 people. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you do when you're doing Facebook Live and your dogs are barking? I'm not quite sure what you do. And what are you supposed to do? Uh, <laughs> hopefully, whoever is at my door get the clue that nobody's here to open. Um, so, yeah. So, with a mailing list, it's like one-way communication. And that's it. If a couple of people respond to me back... I'm happy, but that's it. No discussion, no conversation. In social media, I post something and I can create this engaging conversation. And I know you guys are watching and I know you have questions. And it's just, it's now a conversation. So expanding your social media presence could mean that you start a fan page, like your business page. It might mean that you do more um, 
uh, posting and commenting in other people's groups. If it fits your personality and your goals and your vision, you might even start your own group like I did. I love the idea of creating my own bubble where I can share ideas around simplicity entrepreneurship. So that was social media. Last one I'm going to give you. And this literally came to me from the idea of um, talking to Janelle Fraser recently and that business growth does not necessarily come from all these business tactics and strategies, but it can come from personal growth. When you work on yourself and your mindset, when you remove the blocks that are holding you back, when you figure out what is holding you back, any fears, any blocks, um, yeah, anything related to personal growth um, can and will increase your business growth. And the proof of that is actually very clear and very simple. Um, somebody could be following a system of growing a business uh, exactly like they're told and not get any results, while another person will do the same thing and they will get results. And there's something very intangible that is happening in their mind that is holding them back and you don't know what it is. So breaking some sort of invisible, intangible mental and emotional barriers. And that happens through personal growth. So if you've been finding yourself like you're pushing against something, you're kind of doing seemingly everything right, but you are pushing against something, it may be the right time for you. Yeah, um, that's the last card. If you missed it, personal growth, you, it could be the right time for you to, to hire a life coach or a mindset coach, mindset coach or a performance coach, you know, high performance coach, something in the area of personal growth. It could mean that it's the time for you to go to a Tony Robbins event. Um, I don't know, whatever your favorite personal growth guru is, but uh, that's definitely something that uh, could be holding you back. The way that I'm handling it is I'm working with an EFT coach. I do find this very strange that by tapping different points in your body, you could actually talk to your subconscious. I do find it incredibly odd, weird, woo-woo, strange, but you know what? I have been noticing tremendous shift in how I react to things, my um, how I feel about things, how much I worry, how little I worry about something. So I'm not going to worry about the fact that it feels weird. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> so these are the 26 strategies. We did it. Yay. Give yourself a, a an applause for sticking here with the call. I know it's been a little bit longer than I thought it would be. In fact, I cannot believe it, but we've been here for over an hour. Let me bring it all together for you and I'll let you go. So all these ways are about adding to the business, growing by adding. The problem with this idea is that if you start adding these things to your business, it will start adding things to your work plate and it will take away from your life. Now, I found simplicity to be absolutely life-changing because simplicity is a different way to grow your business. It, you do not grow by adding, you're growing by simplifying and optimizing in that order. So here's what I mean. If something works for you, you want to pay attention to that and you want to optimize it, which means make it work even better and then scale it. If it hasn't worked for you, you could certainly try to understand why and, and try to work with it, or you can just drop it for now. So if it works, optimize it, then scale it. That's what I mean by simplifying it. So optimizing means that you make it work better. I'll give you an example so that it's not as um, um, intangible. Silver, thanks so much. Uh, and Bebe, I'll be uh, posting 26 of them. I don't know which one you missed, so I'm not going to go back right now, but uh, I'll definitely post these. Um, yeah, so here's an example. Back in two, 2003, I signed myself up for teleclass leader training. I don't know what attracted me to the idea of teleclasses, 
but I love the idea of being able to teach a class over the phone. I was really attracted to that. And I taught a class and people enjoyed it and I had fun. I didn't make any money, but it was fun. So the next one, uh, next teleclass I did, I got one person to pay $25 and it was a one-on-one -on -one teleclass. I didn't get any more people than that. Then I enrolled myself into this teleclass leader training. I learned a little bit more. And now I had um, something like a hundred people in my teleclass. I announced it right on the website, teleclass.com on how to use your website to get coaching clients. And I had a hundred people on the call, which was awesome. And whatever I did that day, attracted seven clients, seven paying clients. I can't remember what I sold, how much I charged. I just remember getting off the call and thinking to myself, wow, I could do this once a week and I will replace my salary of the job that I just quit. And so I started learning more and more and more about doing teleclasses. And then webinars came up. And in 2013, I held a webinar that generated half a million dollars as a result of it. What that means, what I'm, the reason I'm making this point, my point is that I paid attention to what I enjoyed and what has worked for me and continue to work on my skills and try different things. So I was optimizing it and it ended up resulting in this tremendous financial success. I enjoyed it. I continued to optimize and improve it, right? And then I scaled it by promoting it through promotional partners. So now instead of having 100 people, now I had 2,000 people attend my webinars and my teleseminars, right? That's what I mean. If it works, optimize it, make it work even better, and then scale it by having more um, people come into whatever that method is, right? I hope that makes sense. So I'm curious. Uh, thank you, Bebe, for, for your comments. And Jamie says, thank you, Milana. I have missed quite a bit of it because I had a client, but I'll check for the recording. Yes, definitely. Um, yes, doing been doing personal growth for the past two years, Rita says. So I'm curious. How many items on your list did you put two stars next to? And just a reminder, two stars means that you maybe haven't tried this strategy before, but you are drawn to it. So how many items do you have two stars next to? Go ahead and share in the comments. I'm very curious to see where you are and if any strategies or any ideas have um, attracted you. And while you do that, let me just say that I know that you may be feeling overwhelmed right now. Uh, I also believe that only maybe two or three strategies of these 26 should be something that you focus on over the next six to 12 months. You may be like a lot of them, but there may be only two or three that will actually be the right ones for you right now. Now, next week, I'll be announcing a five-day challenge. It's called the Five-Day Path to Profit Challenge. And it's a mini training where I will bring it all together for you. And we will identify which of the strategies are the ones for you to focus on. Uh, some of them maybe are not on the list today. Maybe there's some other ones that you are trying right now or have tried in the past. But we will really look, we will evaluate your business for five days, I will give you an exercise, a question, a tool every single day so that at the end, you will actually have your path to profit in front of you that is specific to your um, personality, to your super skills, to your um, vision of your business and your life, right? Um, Jamie says, I'm thinking live events and webinars, but I may change that after seeing the replay. Yeah, you might add something else to that. Um, Silver says six of them. Yeah, that's a big number. So you might want to look at what feels simple to you right now. And simple to me comes with clarity. Which of these six, uh, Silver, do you have clarity the most about? So I would look at it that way. My voice is starting to go, guys. And that means it's time to let you go. So yeah, I will post all 26 on uh, in the comments here. Um, and 
what I would love for you to walk away with is absolute peace of mind right now. None of these strategies are the ones you have to do. None of them are something that you have to do right now. Where you are right now is absolutely perfect. If there's one or two that um, got you excited or curious, let's look at that. Maybe post a question right in the group. Let's explore that and see what happens. Thank you so much again. I will uh, look for your comments. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely um, let me know what you think and how this lands for you. And I know a lot of people are gonna be watching after this. And um, thank you so much for sticking here um, for a, an hour and a half. Oh my God, I thought this was gonna be a 20 minute um, training. I guess it went a little longer. You have a great day, everybody, and I will be seeing you uh, next week as I talk about the challenge that I have designed for you to help you get a lot of clarity around where you are and where you're going. So mwah. thanks, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone.